the nice thing is that you can start with just a handful of PDFs do an ingestion all with the Snowflake native app, and then you know, with a couple additional lines, go all the way to a, a functioning RANG system in Cortex. Ian, thanks for joining me in the show today. Of course, glad to be here. Yeah, so I think to get things started, we'd love to hear a little bit about your journey, kind of what took you to be a uh, founding tonic, and then Tell me a little bit about the customer challenges you're trying to solve uh, as part of this journey. So Tonic actually uh, comes out of challenges that uh, me and the other founders faced in previous jobs. Uh, we worked at Palantir and Tableau, uh, Microsoft, a lot of places that dealt with data. And one of the things that really kind of unified uh, a struggle that we all had was the ability to move data from a place where it was not particularly useful to a place where it was useful. I can give you a really acute example of how it affected me. I was on site at a large bank trying to deploy some of Palantir solutions, got a bunch of errors and sent those errors back to uh, developers in Palo Alto saying, how do I fix this? And their first response was no idea, send me the data, which was obviously impossible because I was at a large bank and uh, you don't just exfiltrate banking data on a whim to solve problems. So what we ended up doing is we mock data using Python and other manual tools. It took weeks, it was really painful. Uh, it had a lot of limitations, didn't update, but it was actually really useful for debugging issues and building future products. So fast forward a few years, uh, the, the, me and the other founders were chatting about ideas and this kind of jumped out to us as something that could really use better tooling and could really change the lives of people trying to do technical work using data. Yeah, and so I'm imagining, right, data security was super important. It's kind of called a debugging situation, but I'm sure it's also pretty important in data science, machine learning, and AI. What is sort of the role of uh, synthetic data or the stuff that Tonic is working on, especially as we were in this wave of AI and everything that everyone's trying to do with all this uh, proprietary data with all these LLMs and other models? Yeah, so we kind of view synthetic data as a tool to solve the problem for people. And there are other tools that we deploy, but it, that's one of the main ones. And it's certainly one of the ones that, you know, a lot of have a lot of eyes on it. Uh, to sort of conceptualize the importance, I'd sort of say, consider the alternatives. So if you're going to try to build a model or develop software, what, do you, what, what else could you do? You could just give unfettered access to your data science or development team that's not really tenable for most organizations of any scale. You can do some kind of onerous access control. We do see that at some of our customer sites, but that comes with you know pretty severe costs. What that looks like in practice is you have a 100-person development team and 10 of those developers are anointed to have elevated access so that they can debug or do the things that uh, you know test on the production data. And that means that everything kind of gets backlogged on those folks and other folks end up having to wait. The other thing you can do is try to build it yourself, you know, build data environments. Uh, and usually what we see when folks do that is they fail in kind of one of two ways. One is they make really, really secure data that's not particularly representative. And then so when you try to leverage it, you don't get realistic results. The other thing that we've seen is that, and this is less common, but does happen, is that they build the data and it's just not that secure. So yeah, it's really realistic, but it kind of doesn't really pass the sniff test for security and you end up in, in an uncomfortable spot. So that's really where we come in to make sure that since there aren't great options, that you can actually do something that kind of drives down that trade up in privacy and utility, but in a way that actually makes developers, makes data scientists really productive. Yeah, and no, I really like that. I think something that was really useful was how you made it tangible at the beginning with that example uh, as one of your work experiences. With that kind of sentiment in mind, what are some of the things your customers are doing today or how you're seeing synthetic be in use uh, in the industry? We're seeing customers use it uh, kind of across the board in a bunch of different ways, and I'll kind of run through some common scenarios. So one is a really large cybersecurity company. They're using Snowflake data. Uh, they have actually all their, they, all their usage data and uh, all their log data uh, sitting in Snowflake. And what they're doing is they're trying to build a bunch of different environments. One, so they can do sales demos. Uh, another, so they can get data for development uh, and testing. And then another, so they can uh, build uh, various models and validate those. So what we've seen is that by deploying Tonic, they were able to uh, drive down uh, the time to develop all those environments and actually get better results, especially from their developers that are now shipping, you know, they've sort of shifted the whole organization left and they're shipping much, much faster. And their data scientists are seeing improved productivity and uh, able to get access to data without onerous 
uh, kind of processes uh, to get that access. To give kind of some additional flavor, I'd say um, there's uh, you know a, a large Fortune 500 financial services company that we're working with. And uh, they are taking, uh, they have a bunch of data in Snowflake, and this is an organization that has multiple data silos. So the combination of Tonic and Snowflake is really driving down, uh, you know, the amount of silos that they have. And what they're seeing is that they now have a staging environment uh, for all their developers. They're able to do uh, testing uh, for their QA uh, in, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, dedicated environments that are really effective. They have uh, data science on it. And uh, they're also uh, able to do, you know, build local development environments that are really custom to each of those teams and work really effectively for those teams. So again, uh, huge uh, shift left benefit, huge productivity benefit, and you know, security is in in a really good spot. Uh, the last one I'll talk through is a high frequency trading shop. They came to us because they wanted to build a RAG system, and they needed to build a really complex data pipeline where they ingested a ton of disparate data. Uh, across a bunch of different file types, everything from PDFs to PowerPoints to Excel sheets. And they had actually done this. Uh, they had spent about three months. They built out their entire data pipeline and uh, it, they got to the end of the process and it was there, but it didn't update. And you know, this is a high frequency shop, so they need constantly updating data uh, you know, to continue uh, to keep their models tuned. And so we actually replicated uh, with the customer replicated with uh, our with Tonic the ability to create that entire data pipeline. At the end of it, it, took them about a week to do. So three months of work down to a week. And the big benefit was at the end of that week, uh, the pipeline automatically updated, which is one of the big benefits of Tonic that you know we'll show in the demo, where you know when data changes, uh, everything changes you know automatically, and you don't have to worry about data updates. We also do it efficiently, so we're not just rerunning the whole pipeline and burning through unnecessary compute. Yeah, so it's really cool how you're helping all these different teams kind of get their uh, job done faster by making data secure in a different way. Now, I've heard you guys have a Snowflake native app. We'd love to know how that works by first taking a look at an architecture and then maybe a quick demo of how the solution works today. Yeah, absolutely. You know, one thing we decided to build uh, since we had so many Snowflake customers was the Snowflake native app. Jumping in, uh, you can kind of see the general architecture here, and I'll call out a couple things. There's two Snowflake UDFs one called Textual Redact, the other called Textual Parse. They're both callable from within you know, the Snowflake worksheet. And Textual Redact will scan any text field for sensitive entities and redact or synthesize what's in that text field. You can configure it extremely granularly, so you can choose exactly which entity types you want to redact and which types you want to synthesize. And it's a very powerful data processing UDF. The other thing I'll call out is Textual Parse from a Snowflake external stage or table. And what Textual will do is it will load them and parse them, create metadata, it will optionally synthesize and output them to a Snowflake table in Markdown format, which is really useful for building data pipelines so you can get data into RAG systems or you know, get data into vector databases. Uh, under the hood, Textual is running multiple ML services that you can configure depending on the scale of your data. And one of the real nice things about the Snowflake native application is that Textual runs directly in the Snowflake environment using Snowpark container services. So your data never leaves Snowflake, which is really nice for you know, security you know, audits and things like that. And once the data is ready, what we're seeing a lot of customers do is they send it to Snowflake Cortex for embedding vector, data, vector database ingestion or even further transformation for fine tuning. No, it makes a lot of sense. Um, how does it actually look in action? I uh, would love to see a demo. Absolutely. So here we are looking at Tonic Textual. What we're going to do is we're going to do a workflow in Tonic Textual. Then I'll show you exactly how to do it in the Snowflake native app. So we'll redact a bunch of files. And then we'll hop back in into Tonic Textual to codify another concept around data pipelines. And then we'll show you how it works in the Snowflake native app. So let's jump into the redaction workflow really briefly. So what I've done to save us time is I've loaded a bunch of files in here. And what you can see is we have identified all these different PII types in these files. These file types range from PDFs to CSVs to text files. We can really you know, process just about anything. You want to throw us a PowerPoint, that's fine too. And so let's take a look at you know, what this looks like. So you can see here we've identified a bunch of entity types, tokenized them with you know, the entity type that they are, uh, so identifying that type of PII. If I want to, I can change this to be a synthesis workflow. So if you look back at now what the preview looks like, it's instead of replacing it with tokenized values, it's replaced it with contextually relevant synthetic data that should more or less retain the semantic meaning of the original 
data so that you could train a model or do other processes on it and get useful results. Let's hop into the Snowflake native app and see how that works. So just to show sort of the basics here, here's textual running on a really simple string. You can see it replaces my name and where I work with these tokens. And then you know we can also do the same type of workflow where we, instead of tokenizing it, we synthesize it. And we'll get, you know again, replace my name and replace my company. So this is great, but obviously you, we want this to work on entire tables within Snowflake, which is something that a lot of our customers do. So let's do this on a larger group of data that's all in Snowflake. So what we're doing now is we're creating a table in Snowflake. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run our native app on top of that data. So now that I've loaded this table into Snowflake, we can now do a redaction on the entire table. So let's go ahead and do that. And the nice thing is this is all happening just in line in your Snowflake worksheet. As you can see, we've redacted all the PII types from our table, and we replaced it with tokens across the entire table in Snowflake. Now, because this table exists in Snowflake, we can avail ourselves of functionality from Snowflake and append the redacted data right next to the original data. So let's go ahead and take a look at that, what that looks like. There it is. And now what we can see is that we have both original data and redacted data living inside our Snowflake table. And this was just you know a few lines of code. So let's hop back into Tonic Textual and see how we can do a full data pipeline as opposed to just a simple redaction workflow. So we'll hop into Tonic Textual and take a look at a full data pipeline. So just to give you a little bit of context about what I've done here is I've connected to an S3 bucket. I've set up a destination for where I can output the data. And then I've ingested a bunch of files. You know, Most customers are actually doing this on hundreds or thousands or you know, tens of thousands of files. In this case, in the demo, I've just done a handful here. But what Textual does automatically is it recursively goes through any directory you select. And so we can very easily load in you know, huge amounts of data very quickly. If you take a look at you know, how the files are being processed, let me just point out a couple things. So here's a PDF. We can show you a rendered version of it. Uh, you can take a look at the entities that have been identified from that PDF. And you can even you know, preview the JSON that's going to you know, be outputted that you know, would be queried by Python or Snowflake. Uh, if you look at another type of file, here's one of a picture of a Coachella poster. You can see that here are, again, this is actually just an image. But we do identify a bunch of entities here, a bunch of band names, and dates as well. So that's the kind of thing that the pipelining tool can do across hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of files. Let's go see how this works in the Snowflake native app. So I've loaded a bunch of files into a Snowflake external stage. And they're all sitting in S3, but we we're pointing the external stage at them. And let's go ahead and start processing them. OK, it looks like they completed. So let's take a look at what we have here. Great. So that's pretty cool. So we processed all the files already. It was very fast. One of the reasons it was so fast is that we actually don't process files unless there's a change in the file. So a lot of these files I'd run on previously. And you can see that there's only one at the bottom there where we actually did anything to it. So there was one file in everything that we were looking at that had a change. And the nice thing is we can actually do this not just on simple text files, but also on PDFs. So let's take a look at one of the PDFs in this group. All right. So it looks like it's completed. And you can actually see that we've processed some PDFs of essays by Paul Graham. So you know, obviously, these would be the type of things that you know, founders might read. So let's see what we can do if we could actually take this all the way to a queryable RAG system. So let's take a look at my PDF in Markdown. So Tonic Textual now is returning the Markdown that we've created. And then we can also return the entities that we've created as well. So the really nice thing is you not only have the content of the file, but you have the metadata that Textual has produced all available to you within your Snowflake worksheet. So you can go beyond just vector search and actually get better results. You can filter vector search results for you know, specific entity types, for example. So let's compute some embeddings using Snowflake Cortex. All right, so that took about 40 seconds to compute those embeddings, but that's still really, really fast. And, and incredibly powerful. So let's go ahead, now that we have all the embeddings from the markdown of these documents, and start asking some basic questions. So just to sort of a sanity check, let's ask a, a factually obvious question, which is, who is the author of these documents? 
Let's see what we get. Paul Graham, that's pretty good. So it didn't, it didn't mess it up, which is nice. No hallucinations out of the gate. Let's ask a little bit more complex question that plagues a lot of early stage founders. How are startup valuations determined? Awesome, so Cortex uh, lets us know that uh, it basically has to do with how much leverage uh, the company has in the negotiation, which I think is factually accurate, uh, although perhaps unsettling to an early stage founder who might be looking for a more quantitative answer. Probably what we would need to do is process some more documents so that we can actually get a little bit more of a quantitative or alternative opinion to this question. You know, I think the nice thing is that you can start with just a handful of PDFs, do an ingestion all with the Snowflake native app, and then you know, with a, you know, a couple additional lines, go all the way to a, a functioning rank system in Cortex. Yeah, no, thanks for walking me through that demo. It was really cool to see how in just a few lines of code, you're able to do pretty powerful stuff and abstracting a lot of the complexity and identify identities and do all that stuff. So uh, really cool to see all of that running directly inside Snowflake. Now, you've been in this space for a while, particularly in AI and in a lot of engineering roles. Based on that, what trends do you see and how do you think about data security and the role of Tonic playing uh, in this new wave of AI? So I think we're going to continue to see the importance to drive down uh, the trade-off between privacy and utility, which is kind of what Tonic was founded on. You know, if you look at you know, what's happening with foundational models, about 40% of the total publicly available data has already been consumed. So the next wave of intelligence of these models is likely going to come out of some kind of private data or data that's not obviously available on the internet today. Uh, to do that, we need to be able to do that safely. Um, and that's not just for uh, specialized tasks like you know, a bank wanting to do something specific in financial services. That's for just general intelligence to all of these models. If you just look at this sort of the complexity of what it's going to be to manage that data, it was something, I, I think it's something like 180 zettabytes were created in 2025, and that compares to something like 80 in 2020. So there's data just being produced everywhere. You're going to have to process it, manage it, get it into a place, dedupe it, get it into a place that you can process so that we can continue to make progress in AI. So I think what we're really seeing is the importance for customers to driving uh, additional um, productivity in their data pipelines. And interesting thing that people rarely talk about, but the a lot of pro probably the bulk of time is spent uh, on unsexy problems when it's uh, involving data. And then we, don't, we end up talking about the elegant solution, but uh, we end up uh, spending most of our time on kind of these brutal, uh, painful problems. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. And I think one of the things now after seeing the demo is if I want to try it and I want to learn more about Tonic and its native app, uh, where should I go or where can I learn more? You can go to our website. Uh, there's a free trial. Um, you can just start using it. Um, right away. Uh, so just go to tonic.ai slash textual. Uh, the other way would be to go to the Snowflake Marketplace and we're right there front and center and you can get started with our native app if you're a Snowflake user um, very easily as well. Yeah, no, that sounds super easy. Ian, thank you for being in the show today and sharing all your insights around what's happening in this space. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And of course, thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to see more videos of AI builders showcasing their apps built right here in the AI Data Cloud.